What's going on guys, it's High with the Upper Left USA and today I'm bringing you along with me on my first fall hike of the season. Today I'm doing the Natchez Peak Loop Trail and this is a, I will say it's a fairly easy walk according to the internet at least. It's around 3.5 miles for a loop and maximum elevation gain is around 600 feet so it's, it's a brisk walk. Today I'm using this trip more as a location scouting expedition just because I've never been on this particular loop or trail so don't really know what to expect so really just here to try to capture the best images that I can. So just come along with me as I try to get some images. So I would say that today's hike is fairly different from the ones that I usually bring you. Normally I would bring you along with me on a sunrise hike where I try to capture the sunrise at various locations. That usually means leaving the house around 2-3 in the morning, driving a couple hours just to get on location or at least at the trailhead before I even start walking. Today I didn't even leave the house till like 5 o'clock in the morning and it's surprising it took me a long time to get here, about like 3 or so hours. So. Got to the beginning of the trailhead at around 8 o'clock and the parking lot was like 20 cars deep already. Needless to say, the relative shortness of this hike and the relative easiness of actually getting the hike done makes this a very popular hike. Definitely now that all the fall colors are coming out. So one cool thing about this trail is that it's actually a part of the Pacific Crest Trail or the PCT. Now the interesting thing about the PCT is that it's actually one huge trail connecting Canada to Mexico for the most part and a lot of people go on it and I, like it's one of the things I aspire to do but unfortunately it takes around like five months to actually complete the whole trail if you're like a normal person. A, a fast person can get through it like in two months but I'm nowhere near that kind of shape. Either way I find the Pacific Crest Trail to be pretty cool and hopefully one day I'll be able to take you guys along with me as I take on this adventure. So I don't know if you guys have noticed, but it's been a little while since I've taken you guys on one of these hikes. And I would say that the weather is largely to blame for that. For those who don't live in the United States and are watching my videos, there's a common thought for people who do live in the United States that Washington gets a lot of rain. And I would say that that's kind of true. But over the last few years, it seems like the summer weather has really been pushing farther and farther into the fall months. But surprisingly this year, it seems like Washington has gone back to being Washington in terms of the weather. And again, that just means that we are getting a lot of rain, so I haven't been able to go outside too much. I actually went on another hike a few weeks ago, but because I thought it was still summer temperature, I was wildly underprepared. I started my typical drive at around three o'clock in the morning, got to the parking lot at Mount Rainier around five, stepped outside, it was pitch black and freezing cold. Like I said, I was just underprepared and it was just too cold, so I just had to pack up and head back home. And I was only able to go out today because there was a break in the rainy weather. It's actually supposed to rain here in the mountains in a few hours, so I really have to get a move on. But just look at this. So if you've seen a couple of my Washington hiking videos, you probably heard me say that a particular trail is a very typical Washington hike. And by this, I usually just means that there is a lot of walking in the woods involved. And overall, I would say that this particular hike of this particular loop would fall into that typical Washington hike category. But today, hiking in this particular season with all the fall foliage, it really takes this hike on a whole nother level. But right now, I'm only about halfway through the hike and this particular scene, although it's very pretty and picturesque in person, I would say that it doesn't make for a very good scenery in photos. So I'm just gonna keep on walking and hopefully find something better. So far, I'm enjoying this hike quite a bit and it's kind of surprising me because it has just like weird little things like this. You're walking through the hills, through the mountains, and all of a sudden you come into this little emerald green pond. So it's a nice change of scenery. So I'm about two miles into the hike or so, and behind me is Dewey Lake. And 
I, when I before I did this hike, I, I was researching the trail a little bit, and according to the internet, the best views is if you take the loop clockwise. Supposedly, if you do this, you have a great view of Mount Rainier along the way, and so far, two miles in, I have not seen Mount Rainier once. But for the rest of the trail, I am officially heading back towards the parking lot, so theoretically, I should be pointing towards Mount Rainier along the way, so hopefully, I'll be able to capture something really soon. Unfortunately, by now, the sky is completely overcast, dark, gray, and gloomy. So landscape photography conditions, this does not make. Like I said, I'm gonna continue on the trail and hopefully, really soon, get something good. So I can finally confirm after two miles of hiking clockwise on the Natchez Peak Loop Trail, I have got my first peak of Mount Rainier. And there it is, hidden behind the clouds, but it's definitely there. Only one mile left to go. So one thing that is becoming notable about this particular trail are all these little ponds. Well, I don't even know if you can really call them ponds because they're really tiny. They're not ponds, they're not lakes. They're really like big puddles. So it looks like I'm finally done with this hike and I did it without removing my camera from my backpack even once. And that's okay. At the beginning of this video, I mentioned that I was on a location scouting adventure. And I think that that's a good way to look at any trip where you're going to a place for the first time. If you're a photographer or a videographer and you're hitting up a new location and you're expecting to get a grand shot just because you see other people have it on social media or on the internet, where, wherever, I think that that can really set you up for failure. If you look at a new location as an opportunity to location scout, then ideally you don't know what to expect, so you can't really judge what you have. So if you end up with nothing, that's just perfectly fine. At the end of the day, my particular rule is that if I can just end up with one picture from every location, that's great. I mean, that is really amazing. Realistically, if you get one picture a month or even one picture a year, I think that you are doing absolutely fine. It's a lot better to get one good picture that you're really proud of rather than a million pictures to just simply to say that you have it and to just post on Instagram or on other social media platforms. So it's perfectly fine to not get a picture. Just be happy that you're able to experience something new and just keep the location in your mind for a future adventure. And who knows, next time maybe you get something absolutely amazing. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, share it around, comment down below your thoughts. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more content. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.